Hello and welcome to Unheard News. I'm Freddie Sayers. The World Health Organization has just announced that Professor Susan Mickey of University College London is to take up a role as chair of their technical advisory group on behavioral insights. Why is this interesting? Sounds just like another bureaucratic committee. But behavioral insights is the technical term used for nudge theory. That is, how governments nudge people towards making particular choices. So instead of making it an explicit point of law or public policy, they call it constructing a choice architecture that helps you make better choices. The previous chair of this World Health Organization committee, until last week, was none other than Cass Sunstein, who literally wrote the book on Nudge with Professor Richard Thaler, who we actually interviewed on this show. The whole area is controversial already because, although it might be effective, some people would simply rather, on a point of principle, that their government was not trying to subliminally influence them all the time. It takes things out of the political realm, where they are contested and where you can vote about them, into a, a different realm where you can't even see them. Back to Susan Mickey. As well as being one of the UK's leading academics on nudge, or behavioural insights theory, she is also a Communist Party member of 40 years standing. This is not a smear or a conspiracy talking point, it's a fact that she doesn't deny and that remains in every mainstream publication report about Professor Mickey. Is it relevant? Well, my answer would be yes, it is. We actually had Professor Mickey on this show last year, and I asked her straight out, is that true? Are you a communist? My politics are not anything to do with my scientific advice. And um, I've never discussed my politics um, with uh, people like yourself. So nor am I going to now. Um, the important thing is that when one gives scientific advice, one does so uh, using the expertise one has, not going beyond the expertise, being transparent about um, what expertise you provide. And I think that um, the kind of articles you referred to um, are a really disturbing kind of uh, McCarthyite witch hunting, which I don't think should have any place in a liberal, tolerant society. Okay, so in a way, that should be fair enough. People are entitled to a private political point of view wherever it falls on the spectrum. And we certainly do not want to go back to McCarthyite lists calling out people of particular persuasions. However, in this case, it seems directly relevant. Because the policies I was talking about in that interview with Professor Mickey, which is lockdowns, mandatory vaccinations, school closures, represent the pinnacle of state power over the individual. They are inherently collectivist solutions, which leave zero room for individual choice. Indeed, the whole science of public health, a new science, is all about collectivist solutions to collective problems. It is collectivist by definition. I pursued the question in that interview with Professor Mickey. Have a watch. Do you see any correlation between those experts that are more comfortable with larger collectivist state-led interventions and a kind of left of centre politics and a more laissez-faire small government sort of right of centre politics. Do you think inevitably those kind of ideas do end up creeping into policy ideas in the end? If you look at the uh, publications coming out from the behavioural group of SAGE, um, many, many of them talk about the problems of inequality in our society and the um, dangers of inequalities, the fact that the pandemic itself and the response have increased those inequalities and the need to reduce inequalities. And um, there's a large group on, um, on, we call it SPI-B, on the behavioral science uh, group. And um, we never talk about each other's politics. Uh, I assume there's a, a very broad range, but 
everybody's unanimous about wanting a more equal society. And in order to get um, a fairer and more just uh, society, it does require the government that's been elected to um, have policies that reduce rather than increase inequalities. I mean, and I, just to, to be clear, I wasn't trying to embarrass you or make it a, a personal point. It is, it's just we're in a strange world where politics and science have got very close all of a sudden. And I, 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 I guess I wonder, would, do you regret that? Do you wish that think, things were I think more? There is a, I think there's a, uh, there is a sort of ideological difference, I suppose, um, with public health science um, taking a more population-wide view of things. How do we deal with this across the population? How do we deal with this? as a society, how do we make things less unequal and fairer? Um, and that is a different kind of emphasis coming from public health, population health science, to um, what I don't see a lot of <laughs> amongst my colleagues maybe, but certainly the media and especially the papers that you mentioned um, would have much more emphasis on individual freedom, uh, you know, individual rights, um, rather than taking a sort of more collective population approach. But the reality is that this pandemic has shown everybody that no individual is an island. You know, we're very in interconnected. And, you know, not no one community or no, no one uh, sort of socioeconomic group within society can think that they can solve it for themselves and protect themselves because it's not like that. Professor Mickey basically admits two important things in those answers. In her academic sphere, which is public health, everyone she comes across is unanimous, that was the word she used, on the importance of creating a more equal society. Now, that may be a noble and good aim, but it clearly reveals a political priority, a political perspective. Secondly, she doesn't come across any people who put emphasis on individual freedom, individual rights, over those other objectives within her profession. She says, what I don't see a lot of amongst my colleagues is much more emphasis on individual freedom, individual rights, overtaking a sort of more collective population approach. So that is why people are understandably a little bit worried. An academic expert in the twin sciences of nudging people, behavioral insights, and public health, collectivist solutions, who is a long-standing member of the Communist Party, is now going to be chair of the World Health Organization's committee that is specifically tasked with bringing nudge theory into national health programs. The World Health Organization is not supposed to be political. Its officials are not elected. It's supposed to be a technical body. But suddenly, when you watch interviews like this and you hear those announcements, the politics of the people who fill the commanding positions within it, particularly when they come from academic disciplines like public health, suddenly seem rather important. It's not a conspiracy. It's not a communist plot. But what it is, is taking a particular worldview, a view about how society should operate, and removing it from the normal democratic conversation where people can battle it out, and instead hardwiring it into powerful supranational organizations. If the World Health Organization is wondering why it has lost a lot of trust over recent years and made a lot of people paranoid, this kind of appointment goes some of the way to explaining it. We've asked Professor Mickey back onto the show to discuss it further. We'll let you know what she says. Thanks for watching this special update. This was Unheard News.